Hey Hofter fans, welcome inside the WB Mason Coaches Report with Mo Cassara. I'm Anthony Barra, joined by Mo Cassara, the head coach of the Hofter men's basketball team. Coach, thanks for the time. How are you? Anthony, good. How are you? Doing okay, coach. Uh, before we get to your team, Charles Jenkins, one of your former players, made his first career start this week against the Los Angeles Lakers. What do you think of what he's done so far in his career? Uh, certainly excited for Charles. Uh, you know, our whole team is, our whole program is, actually the whole university is. Uh, the buzz really uh, got going once we found out he was going to be starting and for his first NBA game start you know, against the Lakers. It's certainly a thrill for him. Uh, we as a team were able to watch the game on Friday night, or at least the first half. Uh, we took the whole team out and uh, were able to uh, really cheer loudly when he made his first pass as well. Now let's look back at your team. The three games this week in CAA play, three defeats in CAA play. We'll break it down game by game. Monday night, VCU came to the MAC. You said after the game you think VCU is the best team that you've played all year, they were able to beat you guys by 17 points. Uh, they were, and I thought they played incredibly well, and I think Shaka would even would even say that that was one of the better games they played. They shot the ball tremendously well, which is a credit to them, and uh, I think their best basketballs ahead of them. They're a young athletic team, and I think they're going to continue to get better and be very tough to beat, uh, you know, come February, March. And keep moving to Delaware. You went on the road Wednesday night again against the Fighting Blue Hens. You come up short by a point, missed three out of four free throws down the stretch, but your team showed a lot of resiliency. You were down by 15 early in the first half. You do come back to make it a close game, but you come up just short. You know, I think we've shown uh, incredible amount of resiliency, really, even in the three losses. You know, VCU, we had a couple chances to cut the game around 10 and hung around and kept fighting uh, as well as they played. And then, you know, to be down big in the first half against Delaware, come all the way back, have a chance to take the lead with 22 seconds. Unfortunately, the ball didn't bounce our way. Uh, and then uh, down in Wilmington, even, we, we fought back and, you know, were able to get the game close towards the end. Now you bring up the Wilmington game on Saturday, you fall 86 to 80, but Buzz Peterson has really turned that program around. They're much improved from a year ago, and you did go on a nice little run towards the end of the second half. Yeah, we did. Uh, they're very much improved. Uh, they're playing very, very well after a little bit of a slow start, but they have a lot of freshmen, and their guards are playing very well right now, and I think Redlaman's one of the better big kids in the league. Uh, so it was, a, it was a tough battle for us, tough game. Uh, we were able to hang in there and just weren't able to quite get over the hump. Now, one of the guys who's seen his playing time increase a lot is Stephen Wacconi. He's seen consistent time in the starting lineup. What have you seen from him during this stretch, and where would you like to see him improve? Well, his rebounding numbers have been solid. Uh, his efforts have been great. His attitude has been terrific. He's working hard. He's continuing to improve. Uh, we need him to you know, uh, continue to be a little bit better around the basket on the offensive end uh, and continue to play good post defense for us as we get into the league and continue to face bigger, stronger guys. Now, when you have games like this, a Delaware game where you lose close, VCU where they're so athletic and can really push the tempo, do you have, a, do you have to stop yourself from thinking what would things be like if you had 100% Stevie Mejia out there and you had that one extra healthy body? Yeah, you know, I think it's certainly uh, it's limited us a little bit, you know, especially uh, with, the, with the depth and obviously with a point guard, uh, somebody who you were, you know, counting on to have the ball in his hands a lot of minutes this year. Uh, and we're hoping to try to get him back to share some of that responsibility with Dewan. We're able to play him a little bit down in Wilmington, a little bit against VCU, and he's still day to day. Now, when you have a three-game losing streak, it would be easy for your players, I think, to get a little bit frustrated. So what do you say to them to let them know the CAA slate's not over. You still have plenty of games left to be sure. played. Sure. Sure. I mean, we, we faced a challenging schedule early. You know, we've proven that we can beat some very good teams. We've beaten, you know, the Ionas and the Cleveland States of the world. So uh, now we have to find a way to get that first league victory, get a little bit of confidence back, and then try to, you know, get that to uh, roll on to another game after that. Now you have two CAA games this week. Northeastern comes here on Wednesday. Then you go down to Old Dominion on Saturday. What are you expecting from the Huskies Wednesday? Huskies are playing very well, very well coached. Uh, you know, I know I know Billy and their staff from back from my days at BC, and I know that he's a terrific coach, and their team will be prepared, and they're playing well. They had a nice road win down at James Madison this weekend. They've won five road games already so this year. So uh, uh, really uh, some young big kids in their front court and some veteran guards in the back court. So we'll have our work cut out for us Wednesday night. Now, Northeastern, it seems like, is a program that's a little bit similar to yours. You guys lose Charles Jenkins. They lose Chase Allen, who was their Charles Jenkins. Sure. Probably the two best players in the conference last year, or two best guards. So is it difficult still to try and scout them exactly from where they were last year because their offense was so focused around Allen, but now they don't have him this year? Yeah, I think it is a little bit. You know, I think you got to kind of throw out last year's team, and that's really not the same team, and really focus on what they've done here over the last couple weeks and how they've started to blend and mold and who they've become. And, uh, like I said, they've got some good young big kids in the front court, and I really like some of their guards as well. And what do you think is going to be the key to victory Wednesday night? Well, I think it's going to be our energy. It's going to be our effort, and, and we're going to have to kind of bounce back from a very tough week, three games in a week, you know, with a limited bench, and, and you know, played some games where we had some opportunities to maybe win. 
So, uh, you know, we're going to have to bounce back, have great energy, great effort, and we're going to have to come out and execute our game plan. If we do that, we'll, we'll give ourselves an opportunity to win on Wednesday. Now, I'm sure you haven't started looking at Old Dominion yet, or at least not with the team, but Blaine Taylor always has a talented squad. Uh, what are you expecting from them on Saturday? Well, that's actually one of the buildings that I have not been to yet. Uh, you know, we did not play there last year, and obviously we haven't played there this year. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it, but kind of not. I know they're very tough to beat there, uh, and they'll be ready to play for us on Saturday. All right, Coach. Thanks a lot. Good thanks, luck this Anthony. week. All right. And thank you, Hofter fans, for joining us inside the WB Mason Coaches Report with Mocha Sarah.